So this would be a little demonstration of a practical application of the cyclodial gear reducer, speed reducer, whatever you'd like to call it. This is the 12 to 1 unit that you saw me in my earlier video build. And we'll do a teardown. I'll show you how it's built and what uh, what's going on. But I think first probably a demo of this bare one because we'll, the one will be taking apart and explaining. So I think I'm going to do is just temporarily tape a battery box on top of here <clears throat> and uh, run it so you can see what I'm, what's going on here. A little piece of double stick tape hopefully to hold the battery on there and we'll just temporarily shove the wires in. Whether they stay or not, we'll see. Maybe if I bend the pins, the wires will stay on. Okay, get that. Get that. This one will be running on three volts right now. You should watch the earlier video on how uh, how he built the speed reducer. Okay, so. Basically, I took the output drive of the speed reducer from the earlier video and put two lobes on it. This lobe sticking out here. Maybe you can see it better from the back side. Maybe not. See that lobe there? And then there's one on the bottom side too. And then instead of just the uh, end cap to hold everything together, I put a wheel with a rubber o-ring for traction and the lobes stick out just further than the wheel so every time a lobe comes around it'll lift this wheel off the floor so it can't drive and yet the wheel on this side of the gear motor will continue to drive so that means it normally would go forward whenever a lobe comes along it's going to turn and it's going to look something like this so you can see the lobes coming around maybe you look on the bottom would be easier also added a clicker just because uh, Everyone knows that toys that click are better, right? And here, let's uh, let's try to get some try to get a view of the floor here. If I can get my uh, camera and tripod to cooperate with me. I'll set that down there. Okay, you get the idea. And to take it to a larger, more practical application, I put a body on it and put in some uh, flashing lights, a steady blue light. Even put in a, uh, a photo sensor and a sound chip from a greeting card. So that if you had a laser pointer, you could use this as a target type game. So every time you would hit the photo cell with your light source, you would uh, hear a sound and I don't have a laser pointer that's operating right now so if we do anything with it I'll just have to hit it with an LED flashlight but um, basically it's the same drive I decided I wanted to move even faster so instead of running it on 3 volts I put this one on 4.5 volts three, 3 batteries in there this is the battery box here I gotta try to get it so it's uh, in camera. So, you can see it moves around like the other one did. Okay. Basically, you got that. And then, if you were to hit the uh, sensor, it would make a sound so you could have a little target game. So what's really going on here? Well, let's let's get over here. Let's start up here. This in the other video is where it, where I showed how the parts went in. The outside. Let's go ahead and call it a gear to make it easier just to talk. The outside gear has one tooth more than the inside gear, and this inside gear moves on a concentric lobe, so it walks around. 
This captures the energy from the inside lobe, so this is your output disk. This is the disk that I added. In my case, I just added two lobes to. I could have added one lobe, I could have added a dozen lobes, whatever I wanted. And from there, let's see. So this is what it looked like when I added the lobe to it and put the wheel on this one side. Of course, I ended up adding a normal wheel to the uh, other side. Started by uh, designing a basic plate that was going to hold this whole thing and a place for a switch. And the very back of it has a skid. You can see right here. So you got your two wheels and a skid to slide on. And then on the normal drive side, I've just made a single hub, like so, that slides on, has a screw that goes in the center and a rubber o-ring to hold it on. The side that's connected to the uh, gearbox looks like this, has a smaller inside indent to go towards the uh, gearbox so that there's less friction between this and the output disc. So the whole unit ends up looking like that when it's assembled. And here's a picture that kind of shows the clicker mechanism. I added uh, clicker fingers to the wheels on the normal drive side. And I simply glued that in place so as those come around they lift the clicker up. And when it comes down this part hits the frame to make the clicking sound. another view of it. Okay, so I think I'm not really 100% sure if there's any more pictures here that are going to show you anything that you need to know. I don't think so. I think we kind of covered it. Um, in the case of this one, made a, uh, a battery door comes off and I originally was gonna run it off just two uh, double A's but then like I say I want to move even faster since it was kind of a target game so I done with three triple A's in there that can just slide in the uh, tank body started off was a as a body I found on Thingiverse but it wasn't really designed to be printed and it's I heavily modified it I mean there I guess this is like 90% my creation now and 10% <laughs> the original tank when I had to do a lot of work on it to uh, make it fit, scale it, make it printable, which was the biggest problem. And um, what else? Oh, the sound card system. It's just a greeting card. You can get them like off eBay. You can get them at some uh, hobby stores too. But uh, some of them even come with a photo cell sensor so that when you open the card, light would activate the sound. You can use one of those. You just have to change the sensitivity of the cell by putting a new uh, pull-down resistor on them. So in this case, I added uh, uh, about 2,000 ohms pull-down so that normal room light wouldn't activate the, uh, the cell to make the sound happen. It needed a brighter light, like from a laser pointer or a flashlight. The uh, two eye holes the speakers up in this head in this whole head area along with the sound card so I just made the two eye holes open so the sound had a place to come out because otherwise this thing's pretty well sealed up and to make it look a little better stuck a blue lead in there so the kind of lights up blue when it's on and two uh, flashing LEDs down here in the gun turret so that's kind of how this first application of, of the most basic way I could show how the uh, gearbox could be used for something, but um, I may move on to, uh, well, I'm going to make some sort of body for this one, but then I'll probably move on to some sort of application that actually can use this slower RPM out to do a sequential, well, this is a sequential control, but it's very basic, to do a more complicated sequential control. But I'm also working on... Uh, a gearbox the same size as this that'll give you a 20 21 to 1 ratio so almost twice what this one is so it'd be real slow so you could have a lot more functions happen during that sequence period